Hi, it's me Jacqueline. Welcome to my channel. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe my channel and visit my Patreon page. Link in the description. On the 3rd of January, I reported for work a few minutes after 2 o'clock. I had time to complete the payroll paperwork and move into my former office, which had been vacated by Marcy on the previous Friday, before it was time to attend the daily, senior news staff meeting at 4 o'clock. I was once again welcomed back by the people in the meeting, and then we got down to business. I had gained an appreciation for being aware of current events last summer, and I had been closely following the news since deciding to return to my former position. As a result, I was familiar with all of the national and international news stories that we would cover. My time with the station had acquainted me with the types of stories covered at the local level. At 5.30, I walked to make up with Dawn. Claire welcomed me back and started working on me first, while Dawn and I talked about the broadcast. Five minutes before six, we were seated in the studio, our mics and earphones tested and ready. I was a little nervous, but did my best to appear calm as Don was cued by the control room. He began reading from the teleprompter. Good evening and welcome to the KXBFTV News broadcast for January 3rd. Before we introduce the first story, I want to welcome back Ashley James to the co-anchor chair. I'm sure that regular viewers will remember Ashley, who filled in as a co-anchor for a few weeks this past summer when Kay Peterson left. While that assignment was temporary, Ashley is now permanently replacing Marcy Clancy, who left us Friday for a news position in Chicago. Welcome back, Ashley. Thank you, Don, I said, smiling. I'm delighted to be back with the KXBFTV family, and I want to thank the station management for this wonderful opportunity. I also want to thank the viewers who have written personal notes welcoming me back. Thank you, everyone. Changing my expression slightly, I started reading from the teleprompter. Our lead story for tonight concerns the continuing terrorist violence in Iraq. A suicide bomber killed himself and four Iraqi policemen manning a checkpoint in Baghdad today. Liu Ewing has filed this report. A report by Reuters news agency immediately appeared on the broadcast monitor, and I took a deep breath. I had gotten my first story intro out of the way, and I was feeling more comfortable by the minute. Don would set up the next story. After the international and national news stories were introduced, we'd really get to work as we read all the local stuff and played footage from the station's reporters. By the end of the hour, it was as if I had never left. As the studio lights dimmed, Paula joined us at the desk to talk while the credits rolled. After a couple of minutes, I heard in my earpiece and we're off. Excellent job, everyone. Glad to have you back, Ashley. The studio lights brightened again, and the crew began to talk among themselves. We had another broadcast at 10, but getting the first one out of the way was a relief. When a sound tech came to take our transmitters, Don said, Billy, did you hear about the young sound engineer at WXYZ in Chicago? Uh, I don't think so, Mr. Baden. Well, he was up in the office, standing at the office shredding machine, trying to feed a sheet of paper in, but not having any luck. One of the secretaries watched him for about five minutes and finally took pity on him, so she walked over and asked if she could help. He said, oh, that would be great. I'm really late for a date and I have to do this for my boss before I go. The secretary took the paper, turned the machine on, and inserted it into the machine. As the paper disappeared inside, the young sound engineer said, excellent, excellent. I only need one copy. Don looked at Billy as the young man digested the joke. Was he fired, Mr. Baden? Don's lower jaw dropped, and he smacked his forehead with the palm of his hand. Julia and I giggled. Uh, no, Billy. What happened to him? Billy asked seriously. It's a joke, Billy, Don said patiently and slowly. Nothing happened to him. Billy finally grinned and said, I know Mr. Baden. That joke's so old, it has whiskers, pleased with himself that he had turned the tables on Don. We all laughed as Don's jaw dropped again. He stood up, muttering, smart-ass kids, but we all knew it was just an act. Don had to have been the class clown when he was in school. On Wednesday morning, my mini-vacation ended. Mom and I went to the high school where I was enrolled for classes. When the vice principal asked for my birth certificate and school transcript, Mom explained that my birth certificate was still packed away in storage, 
but that she'd bring it in as soon as everything was delivered and unpacked. She also told him that she'd see that the transcript was sent by my old school now that I was enrolled. The vice principal recognized me from the summer broadcasts and couldn't be more accommodating. A class schedule was printed out and I was given a booklet about the school bus routes. In the afternoons, I could take a bus that would drop me off very close to the station. After we completed all the paperwork, I kissed mom goodbye and went off to find, first my locker, so I could drop off my coat and then my classroom. I had a new student enrollment, formed to show each of my teachers so that I would be admitted to the class and issued books. I had debated with myself whether to dress up or dress down for my first day, and dress up had one. You only get to make a first impression once, so I was wearing a new outfit from the boutique. The gray, stretch wool, above the knee, pencil skirt was mated to a soft, cream-colored, off-the-shoulders fold over top with raglan sleeves. The skirt was a bit tight, but not nearly as tight as the skirts that Lisbeth had altered for me, and I wasn't wearing the corset. Because it was cold outside, I had worn a pair of tall, mock suede boots that featured a gray pinstriped pattern with covered, for inch heels to give me some extra height. I looked hot and I knew it. I had spent a lot of time fixing my hair and making sure my makeup was just right. I was going for the sophisticated woman look, rather than the fresh-faced high school girl look, and I hoped that I hadn't overdone it. I knew the tricks for carefully applying makeup so that I could appear years older than my actual years, but I didn't want to appear too old. I had missed the first class period for today because we were tied up in the office with the paperwork, and the second period class was half over when I walked in. All eyes immediately flew to me as I walked to the teacher and handed her the class enrollment paperwork. After reading the document, the teacher, Mrs. Demenchik, said, Class, we have a new transfer student. This is Ashley Michelle James. Hi, I said, and received a few reciprocating greetings. Find a seat, Ashley, Mrs. Demenchik said. I'll get you a book by tomorrow. Naturally, the only available seats were near the front of the room, so I selected one in the front row, center aisle. I always preferred a front row seat anyway. After class, a few of the kids approached me, with one girl asking, Are you the girl that works at the television station? I smiled and said, Yes, I am. Sweet. I don't watch much news, but I saw you do the weather a few times this past summer when I needed to know what it was going to be like the next day. I haven't seen you doing it lately. No, I just rejoined the station this week. I do the news now. Oh my god, you're a reporter? No, not presently. I just work the news desk during the broadcasts at 6 and 10. You're an anchor? Co-anchor. I work with Don Baden. We alternate when presenting the stories. Sweet. I smiled. It's just a job. I'm Faith, the girl said. Faith Connors. That set off a wave of introductions in the group. I knew that it was going to be difficult to remember everyone's name, but I did my best to commit them to memory by associating the name with some prominent facial or body characteristic. The minutes were ticking by and I tried to disengage myself so I could go looking for my next classroom. After checking my schedule, I asked Faith where the room was. She volunteered to show me the way, and our little entourage moved out. We talked for another minute after reaching my next class, and then everyone had to scramble to reach their next class in time. That was how it went for the next two classes. Judging from the lectures and discussion in each class, I wasn't going to have too rough a time doing the schoolwork, but I knew that I'd have to apply myself to pick up the specifics that each teacher had covered so far this school year. At lunchtime, I collected another small entourage. It was exactly the opposite of what a student should expect upon entering a new school in midterm. I suspected that the novelty of my presence would dissipate in a few days, but for now I intended to make the most of it by learning names, making friends, and securing a place among the student body. Lisbeth spotted me as I went through the food line in the cafeteria and dragged me off to sit with her and some of the senior girls as soon as I'd paid for my meal. I had met almost all of them during the summer. After school, I took the school bus that would drop me closest to the station, and I only had to walk a couple of blocks. I immediately began reading the wire service stories so I'd be prepared for the four o'clock meeting. I'd work on my homework after the first broadcast. Please subscribe for the next part and visit my Patreon page for early access.